So this time it's a discussion. Don't know where that spring's come from. Uh, on trimming tools, people say, "What's this trimming tool you're using? What's that trimming tool you use?" I think Americans call them diddle sticks. I've heard American technical people say that. And the very one I'm looking for, I can't even find. So the first one we've, we're going to be looking at is this one. Is it Vichet Spectral? And this comes from RS Components. I'm sure there's other places where these do come. And this is their page of trimming tools. They used to do three trimming tools. This blue plastic one. And we've got these, but I can't remember what we use them for. Not a lot. <laughs> and then, this one. They also do the 10 piece trimming tool set. I don't get on with it and they always break for me. It's not my, it doesn't work for me. That's all it is. Might work for somebody, it doesn't work for me. So this Vichet one is 543434 from RS components and it has a recessed end which we rarely use and it has the sticking out now these need these are flat so unlike a screwdriver which if you try and use a screwdriver you will break the core because it's wedge shape these are flat so here's one I prepared earlier so it doesn't fit that type at all, but it fits. If we just look at this scrap Midland 2001, it fits things like that. That end. It's also used for the. I can't even get the thing in. It's also used for the variable resistor trimmers. So the bigger adjustable transformers or inductors it's that one sometimes we have to pull it out slightly because we need a bit more length but it does allow us to do that you could actually cut a little bit off but it, its anchoring might be affected so that's an important one to us now the black phosphor bronze one which is the main reason for this discussion, has been discontinued. And can I see it? The next one I'm going to discuss is this one, and it looks like it's... Is it Velliman who... Are offering this so we'll put away the RS blurb ESR I've had them from ESR before now but I can't see it at the moment so have a search for ESR because it, it may be that I am too daft to search and I've had these from where's their uh, this is Rapid Online Rapid Electronics I have had these sets from Rapid Electronics I've also had to import them from the United States it's enormous cost with postage so that is the Velleman one and you need the green trimmer. The green hexagonal trimmer fits all those hexagon ones. You don't need most of the others, but they do come in handy from time to time. I'll just see if I can find the American one, uh, which we imported at great expense. The answer to that is no. Not everything lives on the shelf behind me, so things are filed away in envelopes so that's the, that one that's important especially those Amstrad type sets 
um, with that particular Cybernet chassis uses the hexagonal ones and it's the green tool you use. Just going off on a tangent, you oh, it, one of the things which is vital for electrical contacts is a fiberglass brush. And the one we use is there. And there's a brand new one in a packet. It's RS514868. They do refills for these because the fiberglass insert wears down. If I can open this packet, so rotating the end, a bit like a lipstick. Not as have any experience with lipsticks, um, and it wrote. This is just what you need for doing those electrical contacts uh, in, especially with walkie-talkies and things like that. So I will demonstrate it on something or other, but I'm thinking what to demonstrate it on. Well, I'll just show you on this, at the tin of this. So we could go over that. If we wanted to solder, the, solder to that can, that would now be solderable, whereas the other side wouldn't. So that's... They also used to call a scratch pen in some areas. I think they're about five pounds fifty from RS. So that's that. I'm coming to that black phosphor bronze one. I'll have to go on a little walk and uh, and pinch one off Mr. Chippy's bench. And then we're using these ceramic tools. And these are just a relatively cheap set from China. This is the CD15, and this is the one I'm using the most. And the idea with ceramic ones is it doesn't affect the what you're tuning, because using a metal tool is going to affect it. So you're going to, if we're using a metal tool, it'll adjust weight, adjust weight, adjust weight. Whereas with a ceramic one, it's not going to affect it. So we have two of those kind of on the bench kicking around. I did buy a kit of these from through AliExpress to see which ones I needed. What I don't like about them, they're more like a screwdriver and they're wedge shaped. So there's a possibility you can break cores. Uh, so I always, always start it off with a phosphor bronze tool that I can't see at the moment, to be honest. So we got a kit of those um, and then we chose what we wanted and bought the one we wanted in quantity, uh, which turns out to be that uh, that type. And they weren't expensive. Because I know when I was at Nottingham Radio and we wanted the ceramic one for one of the Maxon uh, commercial walkie-talkies, you know, it was that fifty-eight pounds for the for the trimming tool, you know. So uh, I think JRC or some branded thing like that. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go to Mr. Chippy's bench, and we're going to show you the one you can't get anymore. And I've had an idea about how to make one. So I managed to pinch one off Mr. Chippy's bench. Don't know where mine's gone. So it's a plastic, hard plastic um, tool with phosphor bronze ends in. That end can be used for those big transformers like the yellow one can. That fits in there nicely. And some of the ones which are a bit stiffer um, would be probably better off starting with that tool. But the other end is the one that is ideal for doing the small transformers, uh, which we finish off with the, that's the test set making a noise, which we finish off using the ceramic tools. So, I gather one of those up again, because now I've moved everything. So if we go back to this scrap chassis, we would tend to start off ones which we think are going to be stiff using this tool, and then we'll move on to the ceramic one, which is easily broken, to get the accuracy without it affecting the circuit. So that's what the plan is. So we, when these come, 
this is just a little bit too broad. So what is it? That's, if you look at our filthy uh, metal um, rule, it's 45 millimetres, which in English is inch and three quarters. Then the thick one sticks out about 12 millimetres and is, what's that, about um, 5 millimetres wide. And this sticks out a similar amount, about uh, 12 millimetres. And this is only about 3 millimetres wide. And it's less than a millimetre thick. So what we would do if we lost one, of, if we lost, I just I've mislaid mine at the moment off this bench, but if we lost all these and we can't buy new ones, I thought of the way of making these. We buy these pins to make up various Molex connectors, and for example, this bandolier of pins is for the Maxon type connector. This bandolier that they come on is tin plated phosphor bronze. So if you had a piece of dowling, wooden dowling, is, um, which is what? Um, seven millimeters? Um, quarter of an inch? Because you only need that. This is the end you, which is difficulty. You could actually cut this down, you could file this to fit and I know you. I know it works because when I was at Nottingham Radio I managed to lose the end out of one of these yellow trimmers and what I did was to replace the missing end with a bit of this bandolier stuff and that is quite strong and is actually ideal so you could it's, as it comes, it's the right thickness for the other end. But it needs to come down a bit. And you could either file that by hand in a vise, or you could use a, a grinder to, to cut that down. And that's what we would do, and then insert it into a wooden dowel. And to do that, we would uh, drill a series of holes and, uh, and push it in. Um, it's probably with pliers, because uh, it could be glued in. It could be wedged in. There's all kinds of things you could you could do, but that's what we would do, and that's what we would use as material. Mind you, these pins are about seven pence each. <laughs> they don't come. Uh, they certainly don't come free. But it's a nice bonus when you can use the bandolier strip they come on. So that's what our plan is on that. So we've covered the yellow tool, the blue one RS do, which we've got we've got one or two somewhere. The kit you can usually buy from somewhere which is Tandy's did them when Tandy's were around it was called the Colour TV Alignment Kit but they're the ones which are necessary because the last thing you want to do is to break the cores and sometimes when you come across a set which has got broken cores we end up having to unsolder the uh, the transformer and then you can it, because it's got a slot in the other side you can usually get it out the other side and turn it around. So if we take this one out using the metal tool, so we've now got the core, and it's got a slot in both ends. So if one end does end up being broken, you can always turn it around. Because it's, it's again, where do you obtain things like this from? And these radios are now 38 years old. So that's it, and we have the metal tool for that, and then we move on to the ceramic tool to do the tuning so it doesn't give misreadings on the test instruments. So I hope that's helped some of you who were querying the trimming tools. And I think we've got a Midland 78 to optimize, a new Midland 78 to optimize for a customer next. So there you go. Oh, these do appear on eBay as well from time to time. And we, we've been so stuck at times, I've paid this kind of money. Um, they're selling the kit I don't get on with. 
and the kit we do get on with under Fillmore brand for fifteen dollars ninety five, which is twelve pounds, which is fair enough. Then add to that seventeen dollars sixty, which is thirteen pounds postage. And sometimes you just have to swallow, roll your eyes, and pay the money. I know we have done. So thank you for watching. Different alignment tools that we need for doing CV and business two-way radio.